Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Patriot UFS, which is a uh, repairable atomizer which will fit inside your uh, uh, UFS, uh, which I received from a www.digitalsmoker.ru, which incidentally are a Russian based supplier. Before I start, though, I must point out that if you receive a free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, my opinion of the product remains true, honest, and accurate as always. Okay, so let's go straight ahead, uh, show you the actual Patriot UFS repairable atomizer in a little bit more detail, plus I'll show you how to uh, set it up and install it inside the, uh, the UFS. Okay, so this is the, uh, the Patriot UFS repairable atomizer. Uh, it's a very simple design, just uh, two pieces. When you unscrew them, inside you're gonna find uh, two metal posts. You just make up your coil and your wick, that'll fit in between those two posts. That goes over the top. And then basically it just replaces the five ton atomizer which you'd use in the UFS. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole process of sort of rebuilding the UFS from scratch because I have covered that uh, when I actually reviewed the, uh, the UFS on its own. So I've already sort of partially made it up here. And normally you'd get your five ton atomizer with this little adapter uh, or extender already attached in the top there. That would then uh, screw into there. This would then goes onto there. And then that's it. And then you'd uh, fill up the tank with your chosen e-liquid, put the top on, and then basically, like you just got all day vaping, which is really nice. Uh, you've got this uh, ring here, which is your control ring, and that will actually control the amount of airflow. So when you inhale, you can have a lot of tight draw, a nice airy draw. And you've got this uh, ring here, which will actually uh, adjust the amount of e-liquid that is being fed into the atomizer. And basically like um, you'll adjust this and then e-liquid will uh, be fed into the bottom of the atomizer and obviously when you press the old activation button it'll fire up and uh, give you lots of nice vapor so the uh, ufs uh, the patriot ufs repairable basically just um gets rid of the uh, the actual regular sort of 510 atomizer and uh, so basically you never need to buy another atomizer again as long as you're using your ufs because uh, it's only sort of slight Downside is that obviously it is just designed for the UFS and like these aren't sort of widely available to the general public So it's only gonna be a sort of a, a select sort of a few people who are actually gonna have one But um, if you can get a finer drip tip that will fit that then you've got yourself a really nice little dripping atomizer there And uh, I've been doing it by just putting my lips around now, which is not the best idea because it gets a bit hot But so uh, if you can find a, a drip tip will go on there. You've got a really nice very simple to use um, a dripping atomizer. Okay, so let's um, go straight ahead then and actually show you how to make up uh, one of the coils. Then I'll fit it inside my uh, UFS and uh, have a good vape. Okay, so as well as the, uh, the Patriot UFS repairable atomizer, you also get included two sets of uh, wire, which is going to be your heating coil. You get 200 centimeters of 0.20 gauge wire and another 200 centimeters of 0.16 gauge wire and you also get a length of this uh, one millimeter silica wick which will obviously be uh, your wick uh, you will also need to get yourself like um, a pin i've just got like a regular sort of you know pin i'm sure most people have got one of these sort of lying around the house okay so i'm gonna up until now i've always been using the uh, the 0.16 gauge wire and it's been a really nice vape but i'm gonna um, use the, the 0.20 gauge wire now just to sort of uh, see how much of a difference there is. Okay, so literally all you need to do is just um, cut off a bit of the wire. Probably going to take off about sort of 10 centimetres just so I've got a little bit to uh, play about with. Just cut it off. And uh, with the wick, you don't need a massive amount of wick, but uh, again, it is quite handy just to sort of you know, give yourself enough to work with basically. And this also needs to be looped over like that, so it's basically doubled up. So that's probably going to be about, about right, so I'm going to cut that off there. Okay, then uh, we'll go on to, the, uh, on to the next stage. Okay, so what we're going to do here is actually start uh, wrapping the coils or the heating wire uh, around this wick material to actually then sort of create the, uh, the actual heating coil. So you're going to take your pin and just sort of hold it in place. So it's going to be hopefully something like that. Then hold the wick against it. And, uh, take your wire and just literally just start wrapping coils around it. Now, how many coils you add will uh, affect the actual resistance of the atomizer, and it really is a case of just sort of um, 
sort of playing about with it and experimenting a little bit just to sort of try and find your own sort of personal um, favourite setup. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I've been going for around sort of five coils, but normally that's been with using the, the 0.16 gauge um, like wire. So I've not used this uh, 0.20, so I might need to do one less, or I might need to do one more, but I'm gonna go for five coils again. So literally I'm just gonna hold it in place and just start wrapping it around it. Um, it is a good idea to try and get your coils you know, nice and evenly spaced and sort of fairly close together as well. So that should hopefully be about right. And you can see there, if you look at the top, I should have five coils. Okay, so now we're all ready to uh, go to the next bit. Okay, so the next stage is going to be the uh, quite obvious. You need to get the actual Patriot UFS ready. So literally all you've got to do is just uh, unscrew the two sections. And just make sure that the, uh, the two little screws here are already unscrewed a little bit because you're going to be post... Um, yeah, posting the uh, the wire from the heating coil through each one of these little, uh, hopefully you can just see the little tiny holes there. And once that wire's through, just gonna get a screwdriver and just tighten them up. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've taken the first end of the wire and positioned it through the small hole in the first post. So what I'm gonna do now is just take the screwdriver and just tighten it up into place. So now that's uh, gripping that wire nicely. Okay, next thing we need to do is take the other end of the heating coil wire and position it through the small hole on the second post. Uh, it is a little bit fiddly to do it this way. I'm sure there's probably an easier way of doing it, but uh, I've just been trying to full, uh, feed it through the hole and then grab it at the other end and then just uh, put it nice and tight. Well, not too tight, actually. Avoid that bit. And, and again, once it's through there, okay, that's it. And then just hold it into place and take your screwdriver and tighten it up again. Okay, you can now take out the uh, the pin. That just slides straight out. Uh, now you can obviously cut these wires with a pair of scissors, but uh, once it's actually in there, a good way of doing it is just to basically just give it a few little of these little turns and it snaps straight off right at the uh, the correct point now, and it makes it very uh, nice and neat. Hopefully you can sort of see it on this one now. That's it, so it's all nice and neat in there now. Okay, so the uh, before I go any further, what I'm gonna do now is actually test this, uh, just to make sure that the, uh, the heating coil is all set up correctly. Okay, so what I've done here, just to sort of test it out, make sure it's all working correctly, is I've put the bottom half of the Patriot UFS uh, repairable atomizer onto my Provary. So this way I can actually sort of you know, check to make sure that the coil's gonna fire up and also, of course, I've got it on the uh, probe vary. I can also see roughly what sort of resistance I'm going to get. Okay, so very important though, don't fire it up without adding uh, a drop or two of e-liquid onto that heating coil first. So I've just got some um, regular old sort of tobacco flavoured e-liquid here. I'm just going to drip a couple of drops onto that. And hopefully this will fire up now. Let it soak in, that's it. And it does, that's it. Okay, so I can see roughly what sort of resistance I'm going to get. It's saying that's a 1.6 atomizer there. Okay, so that's uh, pretty good. I like a nice 1.6. That's going to give me a nice sort of low resistance uh, uh, sort of vape. Okay, so let's go on to the, uh, the next bit. Okay, so now we know it's all working correctly, you've got a nice resistance there. We just need to sort of uh, trim up the loose ends, so to speak. And um, you do want to keep this wick sort of fairly long, but um, not too long as what it is now. So I'm just going to sort of trim it off about there. And um, I'm probably going to try and leave the wick like what it is on the other side. Well, actually, no, I won't. I'll just trim a little bit of it there. And then once that's done, you then just got to literally take your top cap. And sorry if I've been out of shot for most of that there. <laughs> just realised when I looked at the, uh, the monitor. Uh, but hopefully you can sort of get a gist of what I'm done now. Just basically sort of trimmed up the wick. And then you need to put on the, uh, the or this section here, or the cover. Um, 
this is a little bit tricky again to trying to uh, get all the wick inside there because you want to try and get that wick so it's lying flat but um, it is easier to sort of worry about it once you've got this part on so just screw that on in place like so and uh, I'm not too sure if you're going to be able to sit down there but basically if you get like you know your tweezers or something you can just push the wick so it's sitting like a sort of flash through the bottom there And that's it. I can now, uh, again, I've been out of shot, sorry for that. So, um, but anyway, the, you just have to trust me when I say the uh, wick is sort of sitting nice and, nice and flush around the base here. Okay, so now we can go on to the, uh, the next stage. Okay, so the rebuildable atomizer is all ready to uh, rock and roll. So what we need to do next is attach it to the 510 connection of the UFS. So literally that just uh, screws into place. Like so. Now uh, you need to take the um, the tank section, tank section even, and that just screws in. Make sure you screw it up nice and tight, but not too tight, of course. And now before you start adding your e-liquid, what you want to do just make sure that the control ring is fully closed, and also make sure that the uh, the juice control ring is also closed. So that's all right up there. Okay, so then you just need to take your e-liquid and just uh, fill up your tank. just about do me I never fill me a tank or out to the top I'll just do it so it's just about to the top of that uh, UFS there or the, uh, the repairable atomizer uh, now bear in mind you don't need that little adapter because it's already sort of built into it you just got to take your top and then that can screw straight over and that's it now I can just attach it to whatever I want to vape now usually the uh, the UFS uh, this is the, the first version of the UFS, by the way. I don't know if the uh, the Patriot would actually fit or can be used in the new style UFS. So this actually only applies to this old, the, uh, the uh, first original one. Uh, now, normally you could only use these on the GGTS, but I'll, I've got one of these uh, UFS to 510 adapters, so I can whack it on anything I like, as long as it's got a 510 connection. And uh, hopefully, uh, might be out here, but it is all firing up nicely. Okay then, so that is the uh, the Patriot UFS rebuildable atomizer. Let's go and have a look and see what it vapes like. Okay, so that is the uh, Patriot uh, UFS repairable atomizer. So what I'm doing now is I'll go ahead and uh, show you in action. So I've got the uh, UFS filled up with some 18 milligram strength uh, e-liquid and I've uh, just got my Proveri set to uh, four volts. As you can see, now produces a really nice amount of vapor. Uh, now, when uh, normally when if when I'm using the UFS, if I put like a regular sort of five ten atomizer in there, let you know, sort of put it in there, fill it up with e liquid, put the top on, and slight adjustment with the uh, open the air, uh, not the air, the um, the liquid control ring a little bit, open the air ring right up, and that's it. You know, and I don't really have to sort of touch it again until I sort of finish the whole tank. Now with the uh, Patriot um, repairable atomizer in now, I do find that the first sort of maybe sort of first 10, 15 minutes is a very frustrating experience because uh, you just can't seem to get it right. You know, you open it up a little bit, you know, nothing really sort of happens. Like you can hear the atomizer sort of firing away, but like you're hardly getting any sort of vapor. You open up a little bit more, nothing happens. You close it off a little bit, nothing happens. It all seems to sort of doesn't seem to make any sort of difference. And all of a sudden they'll just um, decide, right, that's it, I'm gonna stop mucking about and I'm gonna start vaping properly now. And then once that's over and done with, you know, like the rest of the tank, you don't have to sort of touch the control rings, you don't have to sort of adjust the uh, the juice flow, anything like that, it just works absolutely perfectly. Now I've probably um, made up about four coils now over the last, sort of, I've had it now for about, probably about a month now actually. And um, I made up, you know, like, 
pretty much one coil a week. And every time I made up a new coil, I've had to go through the same sort of uh, sort of experience for the first sort of 10, 15 minutes of use. And I can't work out why it's doing it. You know, there doesn't seem to be any logical reason for it. But like I said, once you've got over the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, then it, uh, it vapes pretty much absolutely perfectly. And you know, like things like uh, your flavour, you know, it works great with the um, the sort of flavours that I vape uh, on. Uh, now, I normally only use sort of tobacco flavours and menthol flavours, so I can't honestly say to you, you know, if you're going to use like a very sort of delicate sort of uh, fruity flavour, it's going to really bring it all out because uh, obviously I don't really sort of bake those sort of flavours, so I've not tried it. Uh, but I can tell you though, with my normal sort of tobacco flavours and the menthols, you now you're getting really, uh, really plenty of flavour coming out of it. And the same thing with a throw hit, you know, I'm getting plenty of throw hit. Though, um, no throw hit, uh, throw hit does sort of very much depend on what sort of setup you're using personally, you know, what voltage vaping at, what sort of resistance you've got the coil set to. And also, I personally find what sort of uh, nicotine strength you're vaping at also plays a very, uh, very big part. For me personally, the uh, stronger the nicotine content and like the stronger or the harsher the throw hit basically. And I'm vaping 18 milligram strength here, so it's not sort of particularly high, not particularly low, right there in the middle, but I'm still getting that really nice and strong uh, kick in the back of the throat. Okay, so the only sort of Slight negatives, apart from that sort of first 10 to 15 minutes of use where, you know, you just, I just can't, for me personally, I just can't seem to sort of get it to work straight out of the box as like what I can with like a regular sort of 510 atomizer. But, uh, you know, other than that, you know, the only other sort of slight, well, it's not really a, a negative, I suppose, but it is a, a limited product. In other words, only people who've got like a UFS, uh, which isn't that many people because they're not made in great, you know, great amount of numbers. You know, so only people with UFS are going to really sort of see the advantage of it. Um, now, I noticed on their website they do have another uh, Patriot repairable atomizer that's going to be coming out sort of fairly soon, and that's going to be designed to be able to use on any sort of uh, like sort of 510 connection, basically. So if you've got like a, a Reva or Tornado or anything like that, you know, or like a Silver Bullet Amiga, you know, you can use uh, uh, that on that one. Whereas this one is mainly designed specifically for using it inside the, uh, the UFS, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how that one performs when that comes out. Um, and the only other sort of very slight negative is that obviously because it is quite a bit sort of fatter than like a regular 510, it's pretty much lengthwise, it's not much, it might even be a little bit shorter actually than a, a normal 510, with, especially with a, like a cart attached to it. Uh, but because of the extra sort of uh, girth on it, I suppose you could say, it's obviously, you know, that's going to reduce the amount of liquid that the actual tank can hold. So I do find I am sort of filling up the tank slightly more often than what I normally would do. But, you know, even with a full tank, I'm still getting a full day's worth of vaping out of it. So that's fine by me. You know, so, you know, if you have... Uh, do happen to own a, a UFS. Like I said, this is the original UFS. I'm not too sure if it's going to be compatible with the uh, the newer versions of the UFS, which again makes it even more sort of limited, I suppose. But if you do happen to have one of the original UFSs um, and you fancy trying one of these out for yourself, go along to www.digitalsmoker.ru. Thank you very much for watching and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e sig-reviews.com. Cheers guys, happy vaping, see you later.